Okay, so how do we find the frequency of small oscillations given just a potential? And that's it. So we're oscillating about the equilibrium point. Um, so there's a couple of things we need to know preliminarily in order to do this. It's just using Newton's law in this format, which I hope you're familiar with, right? So I can just write the force as the negative of the uh, derivative of the potential, right? And we also need to know how to expand the potential with small angle approximations. So our potential is just ux equals u naught sine squared alpha x. Uh, this is easy enough because we can just use small angle approximations for sine and this becomes alpha squared x squared, right? Because sine, if I expand sine for small angles, I just get x, so I'm just using that in here. If x is small, we're oscillating about that uh, equilibrium point, then I can just apply that small angle approximation. So sine alpha x will just be equal to alpha x, right? And then of course I'm squaring it, so the squares go in here. So the equation I have from Newton's second law, I can then just uh, take the negative derivative of this, and I get minus two u naught alpha squared x. And if I rearrange that into the form that I like, I just have this second order differential equation. All right. All right, what next? So in general, when you have the equation x double dot plus omega squared x, we say these have um, general solution you have like a general, you know, a linear combination of these uh, basis solution functions here. And we call omega the angular frequency. Okay, and now what, what would I say the period of this is, right? So when does this solution repeat? Okay, well I know that cos basically repeats on sign basically repeats in this period when it goes from zero to two pi. All right, so what does uh, what does uh, t need to go to? Well, if I start t at zero, I'm at zero, and what does t need to go to until we get to two pi? It needs to go to two pi over omega, right? So my t needs to cover this range, and then I'll have a full solution. So I can say the period of my solution is two pi over omega, so the frequency, which is usually one over the period, will just be the inverse of that. Okay, so that's my frequency of solutions. That's just general uh, theory from simple harmonic motion or equations or, you know, it's just really, it's just really, we're saying just common sense here, right? We're just saying the solutions, um, you know, repeat every two pi, so if I have an omega, that's scale to repeat every two pi over omega. Okay, so my frequency is omega over two pi. Just keep that in mind because here our omega is this, right? So what's my frequency? It's going to be two pi, or omega over two pi, right? And my omega will be the square root of this thing. So I will have the square root of two mu naught over m, I'll keep my alpha outside, and then I divide that by 2 pi. I can write that just a little bit nicer as mu naught over 2 pi m times alpha. So that will be the frequency of this um, potential. All right.